Modern Techniques in Preserving Camel Genetics and Population by Dr. Nisar Ahmadwani. Dr. Nisar Ahmadwani, an expert in reproductive biotechnology, director of Reproductive Biotechnology Center, Dubai. Uh, he has won many firsts to his credit, including world first, first camel clone camel named Injaz, produced in year 2009 and world first bacterian camel produced by interspecies somatic cell nuclear transfer in year 2017. He and his team are actively involved in research on different aspects of reproductive biotechnologies to enhance the production of animal species of the region. Dr. Wan is an executive body member of Asian Reproductive Biotechnology Society, foundation member trustee of International Embryo Technology Society, life member of Indian yeah, Society for Study of Animal Reproduction, and member of SSR, AETA, ICEP, and ISOCAR. He is currently traveling across the world to attend meeting and delivering talks and lecture on aspects of biotechnology in the area of camel. Over to Dr. Nisar. Hello, are you able to hear me? Yes, yeah. sir. First of all, before going to my actual presentation, I would like to thank the organizing committee for organizing such a nice uh, event and for such a very impressive program, centric program. So today I will be discussing about the modern techniques in preserving camel genetics and population. And before I go to my actual presentation, so I just wanted to say, I discussed this, that why we need these techniques, what important camels have to preserve them or their genetics. So number one, if we see the racing camels in Middle East, if we see that racing is like a, it's a multi-million dollar industry. Throughout the Middle East and in most of the other parts of the world now, this camel racing is happening routinely and the prize money for a winning camel is upwards of dollar, US dollar, two million. So a winner as usually costs a bit of money. Number two is the beauty camels or we call them as beauty queens. Winners of beauty camel contests, usually in every year we have beauty camel contests happening in UAE as well as in Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and a lot of money is being invested, a lot of money is being uh, distributed in these camel festivals. The animals or the camels are being judged for their beauty and the beauty of the winners of these beauty contests, they cost a bit of money. Usually a beauty contest like this will not cost less than 10 million uh, AEDs, I mean, Arab Emirates, the rams. And of course, you I all know that breeding bulls, breeding a bull is considered half herd. So, if breeding bulls are very important for the for the uh, for the propagation of the germplasm, and in uh, Middle East, particularly, I know that the breeding bull costs a quite bit of money. Recently, one bull was sold here in UAE for thirty-five million Arab Emirates dirhams, which costs about maybe about 10 million US dollars. And then as we heard a lot of talks today about the camel milk and its beneficial uses, it is, uh, its uh, properties. So camel milk industry is also growing up very fast. And in Middle East, particularly in Dubai and UAE overall, we have plenty of camel milk dairy farms nowadays. This picture is from Camelicious, which is in Dubai. And uh, camel milk is being distributed not only to the Middle East, but throughout the world now. It goes to Europe and to most of the uh, other uh, American countries. So having a camel, I mean, uh, uh, preserving the genetics of the milking camels is also very important when it comes to the preservation of the genetic material. Then of course, the conservation, for conservation, like, we have these Bactrian camels, these we were called as the wild Bactrian camels. Only a few hundred Bactrian camels are now available uh, in the wild. Maybe about, they are saying 400 to 600 animals are in Mongolia and mainly, mainly about 200 in China. 
So the conservation of this species is one of the most important factors which we should consider while applying the techniques for conserving the genetics and for conservation of these uh, endangered species. So now comes the question that what type of the techniques we can use for conservation of the genetic material or for the multiplication of these elite animals. In the earlier one of the lectures from Dr. Zafar Quresh, he has mentioned some of, some of these techniques and he has given an histo historic, historic uh, perspective of how these techniques like AI and uh, in vitro reproduction and embryotransfer has developed uh, up to 2005 and 2006. But a lot of things have happened after that. So here I will give a quite quick brief of some of these techniques. Uh, like first, first technique we use is artificial insemination. We do embryo technology, which includes whether it's in, in vitro, in vivo embryo production, which we called as multiple ovulation and embryo transfer, or whether we do in vitro embryo production. In in vitro embryo production, we do embryo production by either in vitro fertilization, by the oocyte and the spermatozoa is involved, or we do interest, interest cytoplasmic sperm injection, same way, except the difference is here, we use only one spermatozoa to produce the embryo by injecting the spermatozoa directly into the oocyte and by somatic cell nuclear transfer, what we call as cloning, but we don't need a spermatozoa, but we need a cell from a donor. Then there are techniques like embryo cryopreservation for storage and for shipment of those embryos. And of course, embryo sexing, and uh, semen sexing and gene transfer and manipulation. We will not discuss these uh, last three in this, uh, in this uh, today's lecture because we have a limited time of 10, 20 minutes. So if we go from one by one artificial insemination in, in uh, other species like in, this is an integral part in dairy industry where artificial insemination is being quite routinely used for breeding the uh, breeding of the animals. But in camels, if we see, this is still a distant meme. In, in, in uh, cattle, we use the, collect the semen like the, in a very normal way. Whereas in case of the camels, if you see, the, uh, the breeding behavior and the time it takes is quite different than what we see here in, in case of the uh, cattle. It's not only the factor, the factor is also that the, uh, the, the, the way that, and this person who's handling that collecting the semen has to sit there for long, maybe, maybe half an hour is quite tiresome. Semen, uh, one technique in, uh, was mentioned by Al, Al Hassanan. Uh, he has reported it where he uses dummy and a room underneath this dummy where the collector or the semen handler can stand up and collect the semen from the from the bull and he has reported in his uh, report that there is a 258% increase in the volume of semen and concentration also like 230%. This is a promising technology and things are changing, things are happening now, though these techniques are being used. But it's not the only thing, it's not only the semen collection which is a problem in camels, the liquefaction of the semen. Because if you collect the semen from camels, it is just like this. It's, a, it's a, like a pot, it's, it's, it needs to be liquefied before you can, before you can uh, dilute it for uh, crowd preservation or even insemination or even for evaluation. So supermatozoa are entrapped into gelatinous uh, substance and it takes about 1.5 to uh, two hours for it to be liquefied at 37 degrees centigrade if you're an extender. And this is the same same uh, semen after uh, 1.5 hours at 37 degrees. You can see the spermatozoa now after liquefaction. Another problem with the semen in camels is that it's storage. If you see here, the uh, the motile spermatozoa in it's, it's a ejaculated spermatozoa. They drop immediately. I mean, within 24 hours, you see very limited number of uh, very limited number of spermatozoa are motile and very limited number of spermatozoa are alive as well. Whereas in case, if we see, in, this is the case in case of uh, the epididermal spermatozoa, which we collected from the slaughterhouse, uh, slaughterhouse uh, testes. And we have seen that these, these uh, the spermatozoa, sorry, the spermatozoa can live for, I don't do that, one minute. 
Here we have seen that they can live even up to eight days. And we have used these formats well, up to eight days for producing the embryos by in vitro fertilization. No difference. Good uh, embryo production was reported. But in case of the uh, ejaculated spermatozoa, the spermatozoa and the semen dies within 20, 40, uh, 24 to 48 hours. This is one of the reports, recent reports from uh, one of the groups working on Oman in 2009. They reported that the number of spermatozoa also needed is very high. If we see in case of cattle, one insemination, one ejaculate can be used for maybe more than 50 to 500 inseminations. But here in case of uh, camel, camels, we have to use 70% pregnancy rate was used with the fresh semen. But when they use a 300 million spermatozoa for insemination. So this means that one uh, ejaculate could be used only for one insemination. So this also needed to be worked out that if we have to develop the artificial insemination in, in cameras. The same group reported that they couldn't get any pregnancies when they inseminated the, uh, with the tip of the uterine heart with, with any of the concentrations they used with the frozen thought semen. But with chilled semen, of course, they got about 6 to 21% of pregnancy rates. So which is very unacceptable. So we need to work a lot for developing artificial insemination technology in cats. The another uh, biotechnique which we use uh, for conservation of the genetic material is the collection and transfer of in vivo produced embryos, what we call as multiple ovulation and embryo transfer also. What we do, we do here is we super stimulate the spirit female, we breed them with the spirit male, then we flush the embryos, usually at day seven or day eight, which are usually, which should be usually more than one. And then we, after evaluating these embryos, we transfer these embryos into surrogate mothers, which are usually ordinary, ordinary camels. And in this case, this process can be repeated many times in a year. And we can get many offsprings from elite male and an elite female combination uh, rather than having one baby per year. This is in uh, one of the labs here in UAE, which like you can see these collecting embryos from many donors at same time. They will evaluate them and they are being transferred. This report from the same lab, if you see, they now in, uh, they started in with 28 transfers, but now they are doing more than 800 to 900 transfers and uh, getting a good pregnancy rate. The production of embryos by in vitro in the lab is like we do, I was, I was uh, discussing earlier, we can use these, any of these techniques for product, producing these embryos. If you see that what we use, the raw material for producing uh, embryos in vitro into the lab is the old, first thing is oocytes, which are being collected either from the slaughterhouse ovaries. So this is a typical slaughterhouse ovary from the camel when you get it. So you can see a follicle, you can see a regressing cells and very small other follicles. So usually the tissue is trimmed off and the, what we get is when we aspirate these follicles, we get cumulus oocyte complex, something like that. But these structures, these cumulus oocytes complexes need to be matured in vitro in the lab for minimum 28 to 30 hours before they mature for their use into any of these technologies. So this is a typical, uh, I took it from one of my publications, how, what happens to the nuclear material during the maturation process. The ones which we saw, they are something like this. And during the maturation process, 24 hours, they reach to different stages, reaching the metaphase second stage, where you can see the metaphase spindle and the, uh, the, the polar body. This is, this is a polar body and metaphase spindle something should be here. Uh, so, because we don't have uh, the uh, slaughterhouses anymore here in, uh, we have some, but they are slaughtering only a few cameras a week. So we have to rely on collecting the uh, match oocytes in vivo from the live animals. So in that case, what we do is we super, super, uh, super stimulate the female camel, any, any camel, which is an ordinary uh, camel, we super uh, stimulate them using the protocol like on, we see a dominant follicle, we uh, give them GnRH. So after three, four days, we see the ovulation. 
and we consider day zero as the day of ovulation. Of day four after ovulation, we start giving them the treatment protocol of uh, ECG and FSH together for four days. And then on day seven, we uh, uh, seven to eight, we uh, leave them till day 10 usually. And then we scan them when the follicles have reached at about 1.3 to 1.8 centimeter, then we give an injection of GnRH, which helps us in because camelids are induced ovulators. So this helps us to induce the maturation in these follicles, in the oocyte maturation. And usually 26, 28 hours after uh, their uh, GnRH, we collect the uh, oocytes by uh, ovum pickup, ultrasound by the ovum pickup. So it's something like, like here, you see, we collect the, we uh, hold the ovary, you see something like uh, the, something like this. It is a, uh, we see needle guide, you can see the follicles and uh, what you aspirate these follicles into the uh, fluids and in the lab, then you study those dishes and you see oocytes, mature oocytes, something like this. So here we can see that uh, this is one of the publications we have done that we, in this case, we are getting about 91% mature oocytes. So we skip the process of in vitro maturation here. So all the maturation happens in vivo into the, uh, into the ovary of the animal. This is the typical uh, how in vitro embryos are being produced like uh, after the second, you will see a uh, two cell a marula, an early blastocyst, a blastocyst, a hatching blastocyst, and when it hatches on day seven, something like this, usually day six to day seven. Uh, we have recently uh, done a, uh, the uh, review on in vitro embryo production in camelids, and this uh, is published in Liberty to Biology. And I encourage all of you who are interested in in vitro embryo production in camelids to, to go through this publication. This gives an overall uh, uh, overview of what has happened so far uh, in uh, in vitro embryo production in camelids. And if you don't have a link or you want to uh, you want to access this publication, just please write an email to me. I will send you the I will send you a, a PDF copy of the publication. So here, if you see that, it is the same publication that in in vitro embryo production, what we have seen that in vitro fertilization, there are three reports. Where the morning was in 91.3. Pardon me? No, Sorry. Please mute your mic. Uh, if you see the, uh, if you see in vitro fertilization, three publications have produced pregnancies to term by in vitro fertilization, but all of these publications have used fresh ejaculated spermatozoa. None of them have used frozen or any other spermatozoa. Same way is it's in camelids and in, uh, uh, in llamas, none of the pregnancies have been reported, but in alpacas recently, this is recently one pregnancy was reported. So in dromedary cameras, three reports, and in LAMA, one report of pregnancies to turn from, uh, from, from in vitro uh, fertilization. Whereas ICSI, embryos have been produced by our lab, uh, but we didn't transfer those embryos. And there is one more, uh, one more uh, report in case of LAMAs uh, where they have used ICSI for uh, production of embryos without transfer to these, these, they transport them, but they were not successful in getting any pregnancy. Uh, the third technique is producing these embryos, but somatic cell nuclear transfer. So in uh, somatic cell nuclear transfer, if we compare the sexual reproduction with somatic cell nuclear transfer, so in the sexual reproduction, usually we have an oocyte, we get a spermatozoa, so DNA from this oocyte and DNA from the half of the DNA and half of the DNA from spermatozoa it results in an embryo which has the half from here and half from here. Whereas in somatic cell nuclear transfer or cloning, what we do is this outside, we take out the, this DNA. Instead of having it here, we remove the DNA and then we take the DNA or we take a cell, somatic cell, and we inject this into this outside. So this outside, instead of having the genetic material from 
a male and a male and a female has the genetic material now only for one from one donor so this embryo which we generate is an exact genetic copy of the cells from the donor so no males are involved no, no uh, i mean uh, sexual reproduction is involved here so in somatic cell nuclear transfer what we need is a donor cells donor cells are usually collected from skin skin biopsies from inner cell or inner ear of a donor animal is taken as septically something like this and you don't even uh, need to do any uh, any suture or something like that so these cells not only the skin cells but you can use accumulant cells fetal fibroblast bullet cells and cartilage cells and other cells have been used even cells from the semen some uh, some uh, i mean epithelial cells from semen have been used for producing the clones in some species but in camels we have used only accumulant cells fibroblast bullet cells and skin fibroblasts so the pieces once we take the uh, biopsy the pieces are being cultured in the lab till we get cells uh, beneath them and then they, when they reach a, a certain stage we have plenty of cells we we passage those cells we freeze those cells and then we use those cells after starvation or we prepare them for uh, nuclear transfer for uh, cloning technique so this is a typical setup used for the somatic cell nuclear transfer use an inverted microscope with micro manipulators and a dish somewhere if we have a close look up something with the micro pipettes where you handle these and all sites are somewhere in the in a drop in the petri dish so this is uh, what you see under the microscope now and mature oocyte with a polar body so you give a quick exposure to this oocyte of the ultra under the ultraviolet light and you can locate the uh, the, the uh, this is polar body nucleus and this is the chromatin within the oocyte so we need to remove this now uh, after removing this we just check whether we have successfully removed it or not and then we take a cell and we inject that cell into the same from the same hole which we have created here we inject the cell into the perivital in space of this enucleated oocyte and after that we just fuse these cell and the empty oocyte together so oh, this is a quick uh, overview of the cloning procedure so same like we collect the oocytes from the whether you collect it from the slaughterhouse ovaries or you collect it from the live animal then they are being matured and in nucleation then you see here they are being fused and if we are lucky enough then we get an embryo and a blastocyst at day 7 for transfer so we get a clone embryo or second these cells we can produce from we can get from live animals dead fetuses or whatsoever you would want to so this is a typical uh, typical uh, you know screenshot of the embryos in which to produce embryos on day 7 so you can see these blastocysts which are ready to be transferred and these are also some good blastocysts to be transferred but some of them are still not hatched see these ones are not hatched but these are hatched blastocysts very good for transfer so this is uh, in one of the publications we have done we have shown that this is an in vivo produced embryo see the number of cells here and this is a embryo produced from i think this is a, should be part from genetically activated embryo cloned embryo and in vitro fertilized embryos so all of these embryos have produced uh, babies and have produced offsprings but the difference in the number of the cells is quite uh, significant which uh makes us to rethink about the culture system we have for culturing these embryos in vitro and it needs really and uh you know to think uh, rethink over it and uh, development of the um, better uh, embryo culture media this is uh, our first cloned uh, well this first cloned camel which we produced here in our lab uh, called injas and this was published in uh, biology of reproduction so in second year this was from the cumulus cells this was from the uh, the cumulus cells where this one was the copy of a very elite bull called sogan that's why we call him bin sogan so but he was from the skin fibroblast cells so world's first second came clone from the skin fibroblast cells so during the process we have used skin fibroblasts from different animals we have produced uh, uh, produced 
the cloned calves from uh, different animals we have seen, but the, so there is a difference in the donors. Some donors give good results, whereas some donors don't give that good result. We have used uh, skin fibroblasts and cumulus cells. Cumulus cells definitely give better results than the skin fibroblasts. And in the process, we have used in vivo produced embryos and in vivo produced the oocytes or in vitro mature oocytes. We produce babies from both of these type of oocytes with no difference at all. So during the process, we have produced these, for example, you see these three uh, babies were produced from an animal which had died uh, one year before and we took the sample from the postmortem. I think a day after it was sent for the postmortem. So we took a sample, skin sample from the postmortem and uh, we processed that sample. We were lucky to have some live cells from that and we produced uh, these three uh, babies from that donor after her death. We produced the racing champions, copies of the racing champions. We have produced the beauty, as I had shown before, the beauty queens. We have produced copies of beauty queens mm -hmm. and we have produced copies of elite uh, bulls also. And here I didn't show that. We have also produced uh, some of the milking, very high uh, milk yielding uh, camels also we have cloned. <clears throat> also, here you can see uh, a calf, a Bactrian calf produced from a dromedary camel. So this calf was produced using the cells, uh, cells from a, uh, from a Bactrian camel, whereas the, uh, the dromedary camel acted not only as the surrogate mother, but the oocytes also were from the dromedary camel. And we cultured those uh, embryos till they ate and transferred. And we got this first baby from, uh, from this uh, interspecies somatic cell nuclear transfer. <coughs> Was the same baby after uh, he was sitting down. <clears throat> so what we conclude from this all is that use of artificial insemination as a tool to breed camels is still a distant pain. So research needs to be focused on storage of semen, its, uh, its collection, its storage, then optimization of the spermates were needed for insemination. Because if we use once one ejaculate, for insemination, then I don't think that uh, artificial insemination in camels is going to be of any benefit because normally we get a good pregnancy rate with natural covering the females. So why should we collect the semen, process it and inseminate a camel if we are not able to use this ejaculate for inseminating at least more than five, six camels, a minimum. Embryo collection and transfer is well established as is evident from its commercial application. I have shown you the pictures where we have, where we have uh, more than 50%, 50 to 60% success rate here now with embryo transfer, with the pregnancies obtained from the embryo transfer. However, what I have seen is that the embryo transfer technique would be very beneficial for countries like India, Pakistan, and other countries where we have Arkenia, where we have the good population of the uh, camels. But, the, the, the universities and the grant agencies need to finance projects for application of this te technique there. Uh, we have well-developed facilities, but the uh, people can be trained for, uh, to use this technique to preserve and to multiply the elite genetic, uh, uh, elite animals uh, of the, these regions. In vitro embryo production is well-developed and in recent years, we have seen that we have produced a lot of uh, plenty of babies from uh, not only uh, uh, from not only the uh, in vitro fertilization, but uh, the technique of somatic cell nuclear transfer, which we call as clone. So we are producing dozens of clones every year in our lab, and there are now a couple of more labs who have started working on cloning this year. And uh, not only cloning, but ICSI and in vitro fertilization is also well developed in camels. And same thing, it needs the finance, the financing agencies and grant agencies to grant funds to the universities and uh, to the other research organizations for application of this technique into the uh, into the, uh, the, the the population uh, of the camels. 
I thank you very much for your attention. And I'm here if you have any questions, please. I hope I was in time. Yes, sir. Of I course. tried to speak.